The story of Ruth is set in the time of the Judges. Christians place the book of Ruth immediately after the book of Judges for this reason. Jews, however, place Ruth near the end of their canon. The story of Ruth was written much later than the book of Judges, most likely during the post-exilic period. It seems that it became popular around the time the priest Ezra commanded the Jews to divorce their foreign wives. The main character of the book, Ruth, is from Moab, and the book of Ruth tells the story of King David's ancestors. In chapter 1, there's a famine in Israel, so Elimelech, his wife Naomi, and their two sons, Malon and Kilian, leave Israel and settle in Moab. Malon and Kilian marry two Moabite women, Ruth and Orpah, but the three men die right away. Malon means sickly, and Kilian means bound to go, so their deaths are no surprise. Naomi decides to return home and takes Ruth and Orpah with her. However, as they're leaving, she tells them to go back to Moab. Orpah leaves, but Ruth refuses to go, saying, Don't urge me to leave you or turn back from you. Where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. When they arrive in Bethlehem, Naomi tells everyone that her new name is Mara, because the Lord has dealt bitterly with her. Mara means bitter, showing how Naomi has become a bitter person. In chapter 2, Ruth gleans in the fields of Boaz with the other poor women of Bethlehem. Boaz provides protection for her, and he also tells the servants to leave extra grain behind for her to pick up. Boaz also lets Ruth eat lunch with him and his servants. Later, Ruth shows Naomi all of the grain she gathered, and Naomi tells Ruth that Boaz is their kinsman redeemer, meaning that he's next in line to lead the family after the death of Elimelech. In chapter 3, Naomi tells Ruth to wash herself and then go to the threshing floor where Boaz would be sleeping that night and uncover his feet once he fell asleep and lay by him. Uncovering his feet is a euphemism for exposing his private parts. However, this isn't necessarily meant as a sexual act, but rather as a blunt reminder of Boaz's circumcision, which was the sign of the covenant he had sworn to uphold, including his role as kinsman redeemer. Ruth did as she was told, and Boaz woke up and was startled to find a woman in his bed. Ruth told him to spread his garment over her, and Boaz praised her for not chasing after younger men and choosing him instead. Boaz agreed to be her kinsman redeemer and let her stay the night with him, but she left before dawn to avoid a scandal. Before she left, Boaz told her to spread out her garment, and he poured grain into it for her to carry. So, after this night, Ruth carries the seed of Boaz. In chapter 4, we learn that in the morning, Boaz found the man who was actually in line ahead of him to be the kinsman redeemer, and he offered him the property of Elimelech's sons, which belonged to this man by right. But the property also included Ruth. The man didn't want a Moabite wife, so he refused to be the kinsman redeemer, and the job fell to Boaz, who was next in line. Boaz and Ruth were married, and the elders blessed them and said, May the Lord make the woman who is coming into your home like Rachel and Leah, who together built up the family of Israel. May you have standing in Ephrathah and be famous in Bethlehem. Through the offspring the Lord gives you by this young woman, may your family be like that of Perez, whom Tamar bore to Judah. Boaz was a descendant of Perez, Judah's son through Tamar. The story of Ruth ends with a brief genealogy. Boaz and Ruth had a son named Obed. Obed was the father of Jesse, and Jesse was the father of King David, the greatest king of Israel.